please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you wanted to help support this channel, it won't cost you anything. All you got to do is use the links in the description if you wanted to get any of this for yourself. Hey, what's going on? Rich Beckman with our awesome video for you. I apologize. I don't have my tripod because it ended up breaking right before my biggest PC build of the year. So I have to do this by hand. This is my new Fantex Enthu PC case. I want to show you what it looks like. Really loving it. Just got it. Just came in. So as you can see, there is the case. I'm going to be building this, so I wanted to show you what it looks like and how to build it and everything. So I guess the first thing to tell you is the front panel comes off for a lot of people that are wondering. And it just snaps out. It's got like rubber stands on it that go into the sockets. And just so you know, it only comes with one fan in the back. It does not come with a fan in the front. This is your dust filter right here. Kind of like a mesh screen. You just take this and pull this back like so. You could take that off and vacuum it. You could fit two... 140 millimeter fans, one here and one here. You could fit two 120 millimeter fans, one here and one here, or one on the bottom and then one on the top or in the middle. You can move it. They slide up and down as you can see right here. Or you could fit one big 200 millimeter fan. So you could fit the Fantex 200 millimeter fan. That one will fit because it's rounded on the sides. I ended up buying a Noctua 200 millimeter fan and it's bigger than that. It's actually like a box. It's got like a big square frame on it, like the 140 millimeter you can see in the back. The problem with the Noctua fan is it's not gonna fit properly. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to trim this out with the drum, all the plastic, cut it here, all the way down, cut it here, and then cut here. Now I'd rather have a 200 millimeter fan because it could spin slower and move more air because of the size, as opposed to two 140 millimeter fans, which are gonna be spinning faster to move the same amount of air. This is a Noctua Chromax 140 millimeter. You would be able to fit one here, and then you'd be able to fit one right below it down there. So the problem is when you get this case, it doesn't have screws to be able to fit these fans in. So what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to order some screws. I'm gonna leave a link down in the description for you. Here's the screws that I ordered. These will actually go all the way through the front of the fan into the case. Here is the left side of the case. I wanted to show you, you have four screws to take out. Thumb screws, one, two, three, four. I'm gonna take those out, show you what it looks like. Just nothing, there's no window or anything. And you have two thumb studs, one here and one down there. So you take those two thumb studs out and then just grab right here. There's a handle, you just grab it and pull it back. So I'm gonna get this opened up and show you how to build it. So the cool thing is if you have hard drives in here, you could slide an SSD on there, the cage is on the other side. And this thing is removable, which is really cool. You could take these thumb studs out right here. You could flip these up as you could route your cables in here and do your cable management to go from your power supply up through here and then go up to your motherboard, however you want to do it. Or you could have your hard drives mounted underneath, underneath here or on top, and then the fans will blow the cold air over the hard drives. That's the point behind this. I'm not going to use it, so I don't need it. So I'm just going to get rid of all this right now. Take these two thumb studs out, one, two screws right here, and that will take out the back of it. Just loosen these up. I ended up undoing these straps right here, the Fantex straps that you could see the Velcro ones. And I kind of separated the wires a little bit because you have some cables that you're gonna need and some that you're not. For your front inputs right here, you have your microphone input and your headphone output. That is the HD audio plug right there that goes to the motherboard. If you buy the Fantex RGB lighting separately, this button right here actually isn't your reset button, it's your LED controller button. So that just controls the color and the pattern of the LEDs. This is your power button up top. This is for your SATA cable right here. You've got your USB 3.0 plug right here, which goes to the motherboard. This is for your power switch. Last but not least, we have our hard drive LED light, which flashes for the hard drive in the front of the case. The only other wire right here is the one for the fan that comes with it. That's the 140 millimeter fan in the back right there. Yeah, so just so you know, this case does not come with a reset switch. Other than that, right here is your hard drive cage. Again, if you wanted to put another hard drive in there, an SSD, you just take this and push up on it and it will slide right up. Then you just mount your hard drive in here, your SSD. You take it, put it through the holes right there, and then you just push it back down. You have two cages. Just grab these like so and squeeze it, and they will slide right out. So I'm not going to be using this because I don't use spinning hard drives. This piece right here, the cage for the hard drives, you can actually remove this, which is really awesome. I wanted to take this piece of metal right here out so I'd be able to get my uh, power supply in and be able to route the cables a little bit easier and wouldn't have to push up against this. So you actually have two screws right here, one, two. Here are the screws I was talking about. And you could actually take the front of the cage off too if you wanted. There's actually two screws here, one, two, three, four. So you could actually take all the cage out if you want, which I'm probably gonna do just to lighten it up a little bit and to make it a little bit easier to access everything. So on the bottom of the case, as you can see, we have one, two, 
three, four screws. Just take all four of these screws out right here and we can take the cages out. Now the whole bottom of the cage is completely open and it's all easy to work with now. Put our power supply here and run the cables from here up to the side and through these rubber grommets here. And let's see here, we've got a big grommet right there. We can run the power cables through. So here's my EVGA power supply. I'm just gonna rest this in here right now. I'm gonna plug in the motherboard cable, the CPU cable and the VGA for the video card. Just make sure you clip these in and pull on them. Make sure they're not loose. Just position your power supply where you need it to be able to get it screwed in from the back here. And it'll make it a lot easier without these two hard drive cages on the front and the back because you got plenty of room to put your wires underneath. Now, I did end up going with a full modular power supply, which always makes it easier. I don't have all the extra cables, but again, even if you didn't, you still have a ton of room to work with down here, which is really great. I really love this Fantex case that you could take all this stuff out and you know just give yourself some extra room down there. We have our one, two, three, four screws in for our power supply. Here's everything that comes with the case. You have your instruction manual. They're gonna give you two long thumb screws right here. Pretty short thumb screws, which are extra. You have five screws right here. They're basically Phillips head screws with the hex head on top, so you could use a socket if you wanted to. And you're also gonna get a whole bunch here of the little screws, which are the round ones with the Phillips head. These are the ones you're gonna to wanna to use for the motherboard. Here is my motherboard. This is the Asus Strix uh, B360i, and it is the Mini ITX, obviously. There's pieces of plastic covering all the metal components on here, so just make sure you peel that off right there. And there's another one over here. I started peeling it so you could see it a little bit easier. So just grab that and peel it off. This is the Xiaomi screwdriver set made by Weha. Really, really phenomenal. You're gonna need that if you're gonna take these little screws out right here. I can pretty much guarantee if you try to take these out with anything other than a really, really tiny screwdriver like this, you're guaranteed to strip these screws and you're not gonna be able to get them out and then you're not gonna be able to put your M2 hard drive in. So whatever you do, make sure you get yourself a really good set of screwdrivers like this. Just. Take it out very slowly. On the screw, there is a little bit of blue, which is Loctite. As I move the screw this way, you're gonna to need to push down on this while you're turning it to make sure that it doesn't strip the screws. You're gonna go ahead and grab this right here. You have to grab this piece of blue tape and peel it off. It's basically sticky back tape. You're gonna to have to get this little tiny screw out of here. It comes inside the box with the motherboard when you get it. There is a little slot on the hard drive and there is a slot on the motherboard. And once it's in, it's gonna stick up like this. All you gotta do is just push down on it like a diving board and line that up and then you put your screw in. Just make sure you take your screwdriver, make sure it fits in the screw very well. Push down on it and turn it. You don't wanna to put too much pressure on it. You just wanna make sure it's nice and tight. I took that plastic strip off right there, which I'm pointing to off of the heat sink. So we're ready to put this on top of the hard drive. Just take that and screw that down very gently. So once we get our hard drive in, our M2 is now installed. All we gotta do is get the CPU installed. Just take your pointer finger, push down right here and pull out and it's gonna pop up. And then what you do is just pull back like so and take this right here, lift this up. Don't get any kind of dirt or dust or anything in there and we are ready to put our CPU in. On the bottom left corner, it has this little triangle right here, which I'm pointing to with the screwdriver. On the bottom left corner, there is a gold triangle right there. That's how you know that this left corner goes with this left corner there. Just gonna gently place it into position. Now we can take the top right here, just put that down, make sure the bottom of this is underneath the screw. Once it's underneath the screw, we could push down like so, and this is gonna pop out. So we could take this little plastic cover off, get that out of the way. And whatever you do, don't touch the top of the chip. We don't wanna get any oil from our fingers. Here is our CPU cooler from Intel. I'm just gonna line this up and put it in. So once it's lined up, all you need to do is just push down on the tabs. Flip it over on the back and make sure that the tabs one, two, three, four spread apart and they're actually locked into place. So that's how you know. All we gotta do is do the RAM over here now. Make sure that the slot right here matches the slot on the motherboard. Just make sure that these are pushed down and popped open. These sides are stationary. They do not open. On some motherboards, you have to open up both sides. You're putting both sides in at the same time and making sure that it goes straight down when it goes in. Push down on that side first. You're gonna make sure that clicks in. Once you feel that click, you can come over to this side push down on that and you can see that it clicked in and then it latched itself. And then once it's in, you could just pull up on it a little bit, make sure that both sides are in perfectly and you're gonna be good to go. At this point, the motherboard is ready to install into the case. Make sure the back IO plate, which is the IO shield right here, goes into this area here. And you only have four screws, one, two, three, four. Just slide this in like so. Okay, so the other thing too I should have mentioned before was you do have to plug in the CPU fan. Up top we have our CPU power right here. We have our motherboard power right here, which I was able to route through this grommet. And this was done through the top grommet, which is really great. This is basically an extension for your power switch right here. 
all the stuff that goes on the top of the case. It makes it a lot easier than having to plug it right onto the motherboard. What you could do is just take this and route it through the grommet right here. And then once it's on the back, I could plug everything right there as opposed to having to pull everything through and then trying to put those little plugs onto the motherboard. This was supplied with the motherboard, not with the case. This is from Asus. And here is the hard drive LED, which goes to the hard drive LED. And here is the power switch, which goes to the power switch. Uh, that's for the RGB for the case itself. That is not a reset switch. So if you went crazy looking for it like I did, just keep in mind there is no power LED and there is no reset switch. Your HD audio, let's route it down here like so. so. There is our HD audio plugged in on the bottom. It's routed through there. All we got to do is plug in our USB 3.0. Everything is really, really tidy, looking really beautiful. We've got our CPU power there. We've got our fan for our CPU there. We've got our motherboard power. We have our standoff there for the front of the case. We have our extension cable. Right here is the USB 3.0 and down here is our HD audio. So we are good to go. The only thing we need to do is put our video card in, and if you're gonna do fans, we could mount those now and then run the wires. There's one fan header there, which is for the liquid cooling, and we also have a fan header down there, which is right where I'm pointing. We got the Noctua fan over here installed. Got this thing nice and tidied up. There is the wire for the fan. It's actually really easy to install the video card. All we gotta do is take these two screws out right here, take out these two white plates, just slide them up, put the video card in, Make sure you slide it in from the left first and make sure then it clicks down on the right. And as long as it sits on top of these metal tabs right here, we're good to go. Grab these from the inside. We could take our video card and slide it in. So I have the rest of the PC built. I had to turn it upside down just to be able to do it. So here it is. Everything else is done. So what you want to do is you want to make sure you run your wire over here for your video card. Run it from the inside over here underneath the video card so that it comes up and can go over it. Uh, the other big thing too is we have some fan wires. Uh, the thing I noticed about this motherboard is it only has one fan header. You have your CPU fan header right there where the white plug is. Right next to it is a pump header if you're running a pump, but that is not for a fan. That's the fan header right there that I'm pointing to. What I'm doing is I'm running everything this way and then putting the video card on top of it. So all the wires are going to be hidden underneath the video card. I'm going to go into the case that way and then I'm going to be able to access it from the back of the case or from the, the right side of the case. So. I just wanted to make that clear. You want to do all this before you do anything else because this is going to be a real nightmare trying to do this once you get the video card installed, if not impossible. Just so you could see what I did, I took my fan wire and ran it that way. And my fan on the back of the case, which is the 140 millimeter, is in the splitter this way. And the other end of the splitter I'm running down that way. I'm going to put it underneath the video card and then I'm going to be able to access it from where the power supply is to get the fan in the front of the case. Now, this isn't the fan I'm going to use. I'm going to put a 200 millimeter Noctua in the front of the case. I wanted to do this so you could see exactly how I'm doing this. So again, make sure you run your fan wires this way and make sure you put a splitter on here. Otherwise, you're only going to have one fan header. You take these screws over here, the two holes that you're looking at, the silver, and line them up. They have to go in here onto that bracket so that you can screw them in from this side. All the wires are tucked in that way underneath the fan. Just take this piece of metal right here for the case slide that in and push it down make sure the holes line up and then take your two screws and put them in we have our two screws screwed in got our video card sitting pretty we have a power cord here better plug that in otherwise we're not going to get any video card make sure that snaps and clicks and then all you got to do is just tuck your wire underneath out of sight out of mind so here is what it looks like that's one of the color schemes just cycles through all the led colors so here's the final build of the case i wanted to show you what it looks like again came out really phenomenal that's what the inside looks like uh, i showed you at night in the dark and i wanted to show you with the light on just so you can see how everything is very very clean looks very clean very nice install and as you can see inside there are no wires or anything around i just got to clean up the wires in the back of it a little bit but other than that came out really nice and i do have to i gotta i gotta clean the glass off a little bit you know i got a couple fingerprints on there just from putting it together but there it is as you could hear Extremely quiet. You can't really hear it at all. The Noctua fans are unbelievable. And there you have it. So here is my new PC for 2019. It's just a nice, clean, simple PC. And right now, as you can see, of course, I got the 1060 in there. Uh, down the road, I'm probably going to do a 2080 Ti. Hopefully, that's going to fit. It should. I got some room over there in the front where the, the front of the case is and where the video card is. I have the eco mode turned off, by the way, on the back of the EVGA G3, and it never turns on because it never gets that hot. 
Just an unbelievable build. I'm really, really loving it. Of course, if you wanted to pick up any of this stuff for yourself, I'm gonna leave all the links down in the description. But if you can, make sure to click that like button, subscribe to my channel for more awesome content, and let me know if you have any questions or comments in the section down below. Thanks again for watching. Take care.